Okay, this is part three of an acoustic analysis of the audio track of a DVD put out by Richard Segal. And it's called uh, Hoboken, or, or actually, correction, it's a 9 11 eyewitness uh, at Hoboken Pier. Uh, it's just outside Manhattan uh, concerning the WTC. I'll go ahead and uh, continue the tape video and let you watch. This is the story of a 9-11 eyewitness, Richard A. Siegel, who videotaped the World Trade Center from across the Hudson River in Hoboken. Rick was a pioneer in the field of internet television webcasting and had aired over 5,000 hours of original programming through his own company Online TV as of September 11, 2001. He was a frequent visitor on business to both the North and South Towers and held security passes at the time of the tragedy. Yeah, hi, I'm Rick Siegel. I, uh, this is about where I was on the day that the 9-11 tragedy occurred when the two towers were hit. I was in the shower, I was in the bed when I heard the first one and I got the report and ran into the shower, got showered and came down on my zappy scooter with all my stuff and zoomed in here, set up my cameras on tripods so that I could watch with my binoculars and started filming the Twin Towers as they were burning. Yeah. At least the building was in the frame and the whole building so I could get the smoke, the building and what was happening. I was hoping you could see the plane out of it but there was no plane to see out of that. And uh, there was just a hole in black smoke. It was just it looked like a cigar standing up on end with burning tip and black smoke. Which again, why black smoke? It's ready to go out. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, it went on and the, the building was just, just, it was just burning away and it wasn't too exciting until all of a sudden it's disappearing and there was, there, yeah, there was no real sign. There was no sign that anything was going, that this was going to go down. It was all the black smoke. And the black smoke is really indicative that the fire is out, so you're you're waiting for all the sludge to go away and the fire departments to get up there and and, and do their jobs because buildings don't fall down like that. That's it was like the biggest shock and no one, you know, that's talking about a shock to see a building fall down. And God, I mean a, a big one. It's like they're they're designed not to fall down. They're designed not to blow over. And like they said about this, it was designed for a 707 to run into it, and it took it. Two big jets flew into both the buildings and they didn't fall. They're saying they fell because they were on fire. That doesn't make sense. Let's hear what some experts who appeared on television had to say. The building was designed to have a fully loaded 707 crash into it. That was the largest plane at the time. I believe that the building probably could sustain multiple impacts of jetliners because this structure is like the mosquito netting on your screen door, this intense grid, and the jet plane is just a pencil puncturing that screen netting. It really does nothing to the screen netting. Okay. The uh, architect that was uh, just testifying, uh, he disappeared on 9-11. Um, it's possible that he was inside the building, um, but uh, anyway, a lot of other people speculate other things happened, like maybe he was uh, eliminated or removed or something. But anyway, so, uh, but that's just speculation. Um, I'll continue the tape and... and let you watch here. Firemen have reached the South Tower impact zone and reported by radio that the fire is under control. Tower 7! Tower 7 Alpha! Everybody, come on over by us! Uh, let's see, sorry to break it here, but uh, another thing. Also, you notice the audio uh, analysis, the audio track, uh, playing on the left side of your screen, that, uh, there was no, uh, none of this low frequency activity while uh, Richard Skull was there on the pier uh, 
you know, giving his testimony and everything. And that's kind of, you can use that as a control, uh, you know, a sample for comparing with the rest of this track as to what was happening on uh, September 1101. Okay, back to the movie. No, nope, wrong button. No. There we go. I'm not a close one. Five. We got two. I'm sorry, the pockets are fire. We should be able to knock it down with two lines. Where are you in? I know that. 78 small. Move with a 745. Call horn. Ah. Ah. South Tower and Adam. South Tower. Ah. 478. While the brave firemen prepare to extinguish the isolated pockets of fire with two hose lines, the evildoers must move up the timetable. If the fires are put out, there will be no reason for the towers to fall. Rick saw what looked like a military helicopter rescue. What could those bright flashes be? Why did the bright flashes occur just before the collapse? I'm watching in my binoculars, and I got in there just the, the guy and the helicopter line, and all of a sudden the guy's out of my view, but you know, you think you moved or something, and I'm like, where is it? And I had to look, because from the angle, you only get a sliver of the, of the, uh, of the second building. And I had to look, I'm like, is it there? And everybody's screaming, okay, and the noise is starting to come, and it's, uh, then I realized there's, it was like this yellowish gray, because of the powder and dust that had fallen underneath, and it still left colors. And it, this ominous color was there instead of a building. And there was, instead of a grayness of a building through smoke, it was light coming through. There was no more building there. Now let's use freeze frame analysis and take a closer look at those flashes. This west approach path is not visible to the pool camera angles shared by Major Networks Broadcasting Live. And when I was watching out there, helicopters were around it, it was up on the edge. Looked like he's dropping a line out and underneath, these guys are hanging out the window. And the windows were basically in the building from here, from your knee, you know, up to about there. So just to get an idea of what it would look like, and you can see with the binoculars, you can see the person and people were jumping. It had to be hot to make that decision. And uh, he's hanging out there. The World Trade Center, then uh, a second crashing into the second tower of the World Trade Center. Unbelievable. Word now that a... And a single, single prop helicopter. That a plane has crashed into... And he looked like he's lowering a line. It has been evacuated along with the west wing of the White House. The Treasury has been evacuated. The Capitol evacuated. The Sears Tower in Chicago... It wasn't a news helicopter. In Chicago has been evacuated. There was no threat of an attack against the uh, Sears Tower, but they're obviously going to quit while they're ahead there. And uh, all of this world... Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The building fell. Are you there? The building fell. Oh,